Hello everybody, welcome back to the True Crime Corner with Tabi. My name is Ntabi Singh Zodetsi and I talk about true crime. And with today's case, just a disclaimer, this is a video that involves um, children being murdered and killed. And if this is a trigger for you and if this is a lot to handle, please do not watch this video. I will catch you on the next video that I do upload and it involves a mental mental health system has failed this perpetrator in specific and it involves a lot of mental health illnesses like schizophrenia self-harm some sexual abuse so if this is any trigger to you please do not watch this video so let's get into this video this is a solved case that comes from australia and it was a very huge case in 2014. So let me start. On the 19th of December 2014, the Karens Police Station in Karens, Australia, received a frantic call from a 20 year old man. Why did I do that? A 20 year old man. And he was frightened and he was frantic about what he was seeing he couldn't even murmur he couldn't even put to words what he was seeing so this is a story of reina thayde 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 she when this case took place when this happened she was at the age of 35. reina thayde is 35 years old and she is a mother of seven of eight children actually sorry she's a mother of two, eight children the youngest being 18 months old and the eldest being 20 years old so the man who reported what he was seeing who made the call to the police was Raina Thayde's eldest son he was 20 years old and he did not live with his he didn't live at home he was the one eldest enough to move out so when he called when he called the police he was coming home like he usually does to come and check up on his family every week and this was on a sunday morning so he came home and what he saw was horrific was the most traumatizing thing that i could possibly imagine he had ever experienced he got home at 11 a.m and well, the first thing that he saw at the door was his mother pacing up and down and she was covered in blood she was covered in blood to extent where all of her clothes were just filled with blood so immediately he tried to understand what was happening with his mother and he tried to ask her what was going on but she couldn't even murmur one word the way she was in pain so he immediately called the police and help came and the ambulance came as well and he called 911 and the ambulance came as well so now everybody is thinking obviously the community now is out and they're trying to figure out what was happening and what happened to reina and obviously something must have happened inside the house to affect her this way so now the police are trying to find out and they went into the house to try and figure out what exactly happened that led to Raina being this injured. So as they went into the house, each and every room in that house had a child who was murdered, who was stabbed to death. Eight children were killed in that house an eight child massacre seven of those children were Raina Thayde's children and the eighth child was her niece so it was all family they were all related so the police were shocked to have found such a scene and was confused what was happening because nothing was stolen nothing got it didn't look like a robbery there was no forced entry of anything it was just people who 
it just looked like somebody just came into the house to kill the whole family specifically that was that is what it looked like and the only surviving victim was Reina Tere who was severely injured with 35 stab wounds around her body and a fractured lung and and especially she's like she got stabbed in very fragile places if I'm to say oh it's just gonna do my makeup sorry <laughs> right so she got she got she was the only survivor Raina side eye was the only victim was the only was the surviving victim of this of this massacre and the police were really confused and they had no lead except for Raina who was very injured and who could not speak so the hospital asked the police to not try and talk to her as she is still trying to recover and they fully understood so the only person they could speak to was Raina's son the elder so the police asked her son who could possibly want to to harm your family and want them injured or dead like this and he was shocked he's like i don't think anybody would want to i can't think of anybody who would want to harm my family or my mother to be specific because my mom was such a loving person she was such a loving mother and she was such a community person she she loved to cook so she cooked for everyone and when she cooked she invited people over so she was a very accommodating person she had a good heart and she was a good mother as well and that was also seen by the community so but then the son did mention someone um he said that the only person that i could maybe possibly suspect is my cousin an 18 year old an 18 year old boy who just came out of prison so the police were like okay we'll look into it and while this was happening while this was happening the doctors were going over and treating Raina's injuries and they came across something weird as they were treating her injuries they had noticed that the angles at which, at which these stab wounds came in were very weird like they were at angles that just did not make sense so they had discovered that these wounds were self-inflicted it just started raining guys so like if you hear the rain and it's making a noise i am so sorry <laughs> but okay back to the to the case um, the, the, the doctors had noticed that these wounds were self-inflicted and that took a huge turn on the case because prior to, to, the, to the doctors finding this out, the police went to the community door to door to try and find out what type of family the side eyes are and everybody was like they're such a good family, they're very accommodating, they're loving, just like his son described to the police so now when the doctors alerted the police that they found out that these wounds that Raina had these 35 step wounds were self-inflicted this took a huge turn to the case because now the last surviving victim is the main suspect and the main suspect is the mother of all these seven children and the aunt to the one niece who was also found so this took a huge turn to the case when they found this out the doctors did a toxic a toxin test a toxic test i don't know what they call it toxin is it ticks <laughs> excuse me they did a toxic test of her body to see if there is any substance oh guys you're gonna bash me for what i just called this test but i'm sorry um they did a test on her to see if there was any alcohol drugs or any substance that she had used prior to this happening and she was sober she was sober so now the police went back to the community to go door to door again to ask certain questions again but now at a different perspective they they asked these questions 
on a different perspective to actually ask about Raina specifically and the type of person she is. And mostly they said that yes, she is a good person, she is well and everything she's a very loving person she's a loving mother she mothered her children very well all her children were well mannered and it seemed like it was a lovely home but things started to come up that didn't make sense um one of the neighbors said that they spotted uh reina the night the afternoon prior to this massacre happening on saturday evening to be specific she was running up and down the street saying and talking and shouting at nothing and all they could hear was specific things like a few things like talking to papa god and she was the chosen one and she had the power to kill she had the power to choose who is killed and that started to raise some red flags and concerning flags and that's when the doctors noticed that perhaps reyna was going through an episode a schizophrenic episode and that is when you know things started to change and another neighbor also mentioned that around 2 a.m on sunday morning she noticed that reyna and a few of her children were on the veranda picking things up picking up toys and stuff and trying to it looked like she was trying to pack things and just get things in order but it was at 2 a.m so a lot of things started to 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 come together and the doctors and the police came to a conclusion that reyna was schizophrenic and she was going through an episode while this happened so this was still when Reina was still recovering from her injury so they still the police could not talk to Reina as of yet but what they did do what they did do was continue the investigation so as the police continued with their investigations they noticed and looked into her past they noticed that Reina had um, a history of mental illnesses that were not taken care of, that were not given medication, that she did not have any consultation with any psychiatrist. So it was just a buildup of so many things that had led her to this one particular situation and that ended very, very, very horribly. The heartbreaking thing about, the most heartbreaking situation about this whole thing is that eight children were murdered because of their parents mental health was not taken care of and it goes to show that if you ignore certain signs around the people around you or if you see someone who has a schizophrenic sign or has a mental illness but you just side eye it and be like, or just side eye it and just look away. It could lead to a problem. It could lead to a huge problem. And I say that if this, if you neglect that person's, or if you don't make somebody aware of this specific person's mental health issue, it could lead to a child massacre. But this case just goes to show what neglected mental health could do, and what the outcome could be. So this is a very sad, very sad, this is a very sad case because eight children died from the ages of 18 months old to 14. And they were all buried and had one funeral, buried at the same time and had one funeral. You, it, it's very heartbreaking when I researched this case that you could see the different sizes of the, of the coffins, like the smallest, tiniest coffin and it hit me hard especially to think also that this case this happened six days before christmas when it was a time that kids should be happy and it should be a time for family but you know so the whole community came together and the funeral was attended by four thousand people 
4,000 people. And the, um, the prime minister back then, Tony, I forgot his surname, sorry. Tony also attended, the prime minister of Australia attended the funeral as well. So it was a very huge case and a lot of people, you know, brought gifts, brought cards, teddy bears and left them at the at the house, you know. It was a very heartbreaking scene. And even if you did not know them personally, you could feel the tension, you could feel the sadness that was happening. So, you know, after this, the police, after a few weeks, the police could come in to the, to the hospital to try and talk to Reina, you know. But bef before they started their interrogation, they wanted to make sure that Reina spoke to a psychiatrist first so that they can figure out what was happening. And after the psychiatrist asked Reina what was happening or what happened that day, she said that she, God told her, she got a bird call from God. And she said that the world was ending. God told her that the world was ending. And she killed her children because she wanted her children to leave this earth pure and go to heaven directly. So when the police went to the homes and did their interviews and stuff like that one of the neighbors said that she overheard a bit of what Raina was saying when she was pacing up and down the night before the murder and this is what she, she was saying you hurt my kids i hurt them first you stab my kids i stab them first if you kill them i will kill them first so this, you know, this comes from a place where she was not herself. And perhaps that's why she injured herself so, 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 so badly. So after this, inter after this um, interview with the psychiatrist prior to, before, I mean, before the, the interrogation, they had established that Reina was schizophrenic and she had mental issues that come from a young age that were neglected so yeah so prior to this in interrogation or her being charged with eight murders her neighbor said that the last few months arena has been acting very odd because she was an excessive user of marijuana for 20 more than 20 years and all of a sudden she just stopped using any substances and did not want any substances in her home to be specific she did not want any alcohol weed cigarettes anything of that sort she cleansed her house a lot and coming from a woman who was said that she smoked 20 joints a day to immediately stopping to smoke that was a huge 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 shift and it is it is it is a thing that when somebody when a human just drastically does such a change it is not normal coming from 20 joints to stopping to smoke in just a trip of a switch in, the, in their mind it is not normal it's a sign that shows that she is going through something or that person is going through a mental illness when a person does such a drastic change in their life so yes so the next day after the interrogation with the police she was charged with eight murders but they knew that this was not a um, serial killer case or heartless evil or person who was trying to kill their children intentionally this mother this was an ill mother who killed her children because of an episode so they had to deal with this case very differently so they took this case to the brisbane's mental health court and this was on the 16th the 16th of april 2017 so this was two years later after this was approximately two years later after the massacre and reina was 37 years old around this time and her case, her, 
the legal team said to the to the court that this is merely partly the mental health facilities and the mental health system's fault because I'm sure Raina went to the doctor a couple of times during, um, throughout her life and they could have seen signs that she is suffering from mental illnesses. The people around her, her family could have seen signs that she is not well. But each and every person who has probably seen these signs ignored it. And it was not an, it was not intentional for her to kill her children. You know, so they couldn't take her to prison because they didn't find her criminally capable of doing such. But because they said that she was in the mental state, they said that she will not go to prison, but she will go to a mental health facility and serve her time there under care and medical attention. So... Raina ended up serving time, serving her time at Brisbane's mental health facility. And she's still currently serving her time there. So her son, Lewis, her son, Lewis went through a lot. I mean, for him to know, to see his mother in such a position and in such a light. And sorry, I didn't mention this. He, Lewis was also the one who had to identify his siblings' bodies. So imagine seeing your mother, like, in that situation. And then later on, the police come and call you to come and identify bodies. Eight bodies. And seven of those are your siblings. That has been a very traumatic, I'm, I'm sure that has been a very traumatic experience for Lewis. But he says that he has forgiven, he has forgiven his mother. He has forgiven, he has forgiven his mother. And, you know, and that people shouldn't judge her, shouldn't be so quick to judge because her, his mother actually went through so much. She went through a lot of abuse from the partners that she has been with. I mean, she she was a single mother to eight children. One who's one was an infant, and others were teenagers. Obviously, she did not have enough money to take care of these children, so it was a lot for her. That is a lot of stress that she had to undergo, plus the physical abuse that she went through with all her partners, the lack of money. And she was suffering an illness as well. So it was a lot. So she, he said that people shouldn't be so quick to judge his mother, but try and educate themselves on mental health and how important it is. Because if these signs were noticed earlier, all of this could have been prevented, you know. And he said that he started having dreams where all of his siblings were behind him and he was trying to protect him, protect them from his, their mother. Imagine being placed in such a position where you are trying to predict, protect your siblings from your own mother, you know, and from a mother you grew up knowing she was loving, you know, and I'm sure his son didn't also notice these signs, you know, because I'm sure if he did, he could have said something or maybe you know this is where this is where education about mental health is so important because a lot of people could have noticed or noticed these signs and assisted in a way but you know this is very sad this is a very heavy case guys um yeah so when all this when the case happened and everything was over the state of Karen's decided that the building that was the Thigh Dye's home needed to be demolished because I don't think anybody else would want to live in a place where eight children were killed. So they decided to demolish everything and like make it a park. Like they cut down everything, they put the house down and they made it, they turned it into a park and they planted eight trees. Each tree represented each child. 
and they turned it to a memorial where kids can go to and people so the house was put down and demolished and a memorial park was placed there where people could go place their their flowers the you know condolences of the situation i mean this affected the whole country actually the whole country of australia and yes it is a very beautiful park right now and i heard like on some of the articles that i've read they said that the the municipality of karen's or the government of karen's tried to place um a swing sets and parks for kids to play but they later on realized that that was not the the vibe that they were trying to go for because this was a very very sad case you know so but it's a very beautiful park and it places a very good memory of those kids but Reina is still at the Brisbane's mental health facility and she's slowly recovering slowly processing through all of that that she went through but she had she had an incident on the second anniversary of of the massacre i mean i don't blame her because imagine after all of this coming to coming to mind again and you realize that oh my god i killed eight of my children i killed eight of my children so she had an episode again on the anniversary of her of her children's death and yes you know lewis says that he lewis the first the, the eldest son says that you know he he's living his life for his siblings and he knows that his siblings are watching over him and his purpose in life now is to make his siblings proud you know but yeah this is a very heavy case um thank you guys for tuning in and i hope that from this video you learned something from it that if you see a friend if you see a family member going through something going through something that involves mental health try not to keep quiet about it try and confront them and ask them about it and just make due diligence and always be educate yourself on mental health so that you can help others and i will catch you guys on I will catch you guys sorry i will catch you guys on my next episode thank you for tuning in and yeah i to be honest i don't know what i was doing but it looks good i don't know what i was doing with my eyes i think i should need like a little bit more pink thank you for tuning in and watching my videos thank you guys for tuning into my video thank you for watching and i hope you guys learned something and um love and blessings from me to you and i'll catch you guys in my next video peace